Hi everyone, welcome. Thanks for having me and thanks for joining. Today, I will talk about diversity in open source from an Asian perspective. My name is Imasa Ishida, a staff program manager of OSPO Open Source Community Strategy at VMI. So let me share the agenda. First, I will talk about why Asian perspective that I've chosen as a theme. I will represent some data of open source participation and the brief history of open source in Asia. I will then share a list of potential barriers and ideas to overcome. Finally, I will close the talk with a summary of key points. So let me talk about my journey to come here, a bit long, but perhaps relevant for this talk and my involvement in open source. So I was born and grew up in Japan, studied math physics and engineering at university. I joined a global tech company as a Windows software developer for four years, spending much time in Tokyo and Seattle. Then I had an opportunity to lead the mobile phone protocol development in the UK. At that time, I led my English husband, I met my English husband and moved to the UK where I led Linux and Android-based tablet development as a software dev manager. So this was my first contact with open source, working on Linux PSP, SDK, HDK, and Android platform. Then I had a year out to look after my son, to choose and then change my career from telecoms to cloud technology. Then led multiple programs from cloud transformation, information security compliance, through to company acquisition program. Moving up to date at BMI in the last three years, I led the strategic alignment between the community contributions and the company's business strategies. So is there any Asian, uh, you from Asia? Is there anyone from Asian country? Yes, hello, thank you. <laughs> So Asia is the world's most populated continent, thus with a great potential to become a driving force of open source. The continent is extremely culturally diverse. Perhaps everyone agrees that open source presence is very strong in North America today, and its official language is English. As many studies shows, a variety of perspectives and experiences create a richer and stronger community, and they produce more innovative solutions. And the data shows that organizations with high DEI score are more innovative and 35% more competitive than the others. Many countries try, and many companies try to promote and recruit a variety of people to increase their diversity. For open source communities, it is more complex. Although many open source foundations run a number of great projects to improve the community DEI status, it takes longer due to its nature. So today I'm going to identify possible reasons that prevent strong Asian participation to open source so that we can think how to overcome it. The source of this data is from Octoverse and the Linux Foundation DEI report. As the report says, the number of Asian open source developers is high and growth is high, but we hear very little voices from them in the survey. On the ground, Asian representation in open source communities are not very strong. As I often hear many open source communities struggling to get strong Asian participation in the communities, especially in the leadership positions. As of today, many country, community, leaders predominate from the US and Europe, and many open source surveys show low or very low Asian participation, so we have a great opportunity to reset the balance. Additionally, if you look more closely, we can see the participation from Asia is predominantly from China and India. 
The region consists of over 20 countries, and they are positively engaged in open source. Supported by organizations who recognize the importance of open source. So open source history in Asia started with Linux, along with strong support by each national government. By early 2000, open source was not well recognized in most Asian countries. Japan was one of the early adopters of Linux and already started to adopt open source with help from Japanese Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry, Many open source organizations were set up in Asian countries as listed in this slide. Funding from the central govern government triggered and accelerated the speed and increased awareness of open source in Asia. And today, many open source conferences are held across Asia every year. I've shown just a few on the slide However, I'm sure many of you have already attended them and many others that are not shown here. So now we know that the firm foundation of open source exists in Asia. Next, let's look at the geographical and social factors that could impact strong participation in open source. I cannot talk for all of Asia but I've identified some key reasons that could explain their limited participation today. In the last months, I have interviewed many Asian colleagues, ex-colleagues, and community members and leaders. In the next few slides, I'd like to share my findings so that together we can think of how to improve our participation. Our ultimate goal is to have as many mature open source communities across Asia, as there are in the US and Europe. So time differences and limitations are the significant factor in the participation with open source. This is common to all regions, and for some regions, it is a dominant factor. For engineers in Asia, Unfortunately, and unfriendly meeting times are strong barriers, barriers to community pre, uh, participation. The research shows that more new members remain in the communities when they actively join the discussion rather than they just commit code or create issues. One of the steering committee members in India commented, Lots of projects in the CNCF space have meetings that are too late for APAC regions. Personally, I've attended some meetings at midnight when I was just starting out my career, but I'm not able to do that right now. Not able to attend meetings means that I lose visibility. I'm lucky enough to have enough credibility in the community, but for those just starting out their career, this is, not, this is a huge barrier to growth. There are also times when I've missed late meetings and woken up to see decisions have been already made without my input. Although there is a challenge to organize the community meetings at sociable times for everyone, we need to be mindful and flex where we can. Another time-related challenge is having time available for open source. In fact, most developers across all regions listed insufficient time as the biggest barrier to contribute into open source projects. The situation varies if you are allowed to work on open source during working hours or not, or if you can afford to spend time for open source outside of your core hours. This will also attach the regional culture and other social aspect that will covered in the later slide. Language barriers have been mentioned by nearly all the people I interviewed. It is probably the biggest barrier for Asian people. Language can also a challenge for other countries where English is not their first language. However, these, those countries whose language is Latin-based 
perhaps find it less of an issue. Most people say reading and writing is not a problem, but it is still a barrier, especially when you are busy, as it takes extra time and work, even with the dictionary and translation tools. And here, real-time conversations in English is a real challenge. When the spoken language is heavily accented, when there is background noise or poor audio quality or more than one person speaking at the same time, the situation can be worse. While translating in their mind, the speaker has usually moved on. The diagram in the right on this slide is a good example. In Japan, 98 residents are Japanese, so we are rarely need to speak in English day to day. I've been working in the US and e Europe more than 10 years, but it still takes some time to tune my ears to the sounds and vocabulary when I talk with someone who I met for the first time. When I write documents, I still use an online dictionary to choose the best word so that I can convey the right message. Quite often, I have a clear logic in my mind, but struggle to communicate my thoughts as clearly as I would like. So how about the other countries? India is known as the second largest English-speaking country. Their business language is English. However, this is not true for all Asian countries. One of my Indian colleagues said that they've had a very few participants from other Asian countries outside of India in their community meetings. One of the reasons quoted is that they might feel okay with written communication, but aren't comfortable with speaking in English in meetings. In China, less than 1% of residents speak English. It presents a large communication barrier for many international companies. One community board member in China have commented, I have been working for an international company for over 10 years where our official language is English. And based on my experience, language is the biggest barrier for communi communication, especially oral communication. And it would impact personal development and team collaborations. It is also the biggest factor stopping people joining open source communities. However, in recent years, the situation seems to have improved, many, mainly for two reasons. Um, first one is more young people joined who are more comfortable with English due to having exposure to English movies, dramas from Netflix and Amazon Prime. And auto translation tools, auto subtitles provided by Zoom. In China, it is also known that many document and communication is Chinese only for some open source projects, especially if the products are developed for the local market only. There are some Asian countries who speak good English. For example, over 90% of people in Philippines speak English. But there also seems to be other factors behind language, like confidence, shyness, and fear of confrontation. So it's a complex mix that can't be easily resolved with technology and translation tool itself. The effect of company culture, this varies and will depend on the companies, their size, national culture, and industries. VMware is a US global company, and it appreciates the value of open source. It's a core part of our business strategy, so we have a strong open source culture. The companies I've been working in previously were similar, so I'm comfortable to be in this environment. Many of them tend to contribute with support and encouragement from their organizations. However, this is not the case for all. Employer support is important. In general, many employees don't have the time and energy to contribute to open source out of personal interest. 
An Indian colleague said to me that there are practically no companies who are willing to support their employees to work on open source in India. VMware and other tech giant companies are exceptions, but otherwise, if someone needs to work on open source, quite often they need to work in their own time. This does not scale well keeping work-life work balance constraints in mind. This is a similar situation in Japan. Unless a company values the open source concept, many companies don't quite appreciate the employees spending time to contribute to an external community. There's another aspect in Japan, although ch uh, changing jobs is becoming more common, especially amongst the young people. Lifetime employment still largely predominates, so many people didn't find as huge benefit to build the skills and reputations in open source communities as other countries. And building external relationships through communities was not so great value. So gender equity, based on a number of studies, the major, uh, majority of people in open source are thought to be male. Gender bias is also one of the biggest factors that impacts the open source environment. Unfortunately, it is well known that Asian countries rank lower than the West for gender equity. At the start of my career, extreme gender bias was common throughout the workplace. For example, when I joined my first company in Japan, we had a custom called tea duty, where on the monthly rotation, female colleagues and employees have to arrive early in the morning to make morning coffee for their boss. Today's young generation cannot believe this, but we never questioned it at that time. I also heard an interesting story from a female PhD student in China who actually participated in open source communities. When they select college, uh, college majors and future careers, girls are always told that being a software engineer is very tiring and stressful job also requires logical thinking skill that they lack for. As a result, many of them won't choose to become a software engineer, even if they have pursued a master degrees, but they will still enter this industry taking up products or operation roles. She also said that the society still expects women to take a more responsibilities within a family, like childcare especially. Gender issue is a sensitive and complicated topic in the current society and a large barrier to overcome. Social environment and culture are also important factors. I think characteristic tendency at the national level is one of the key factors in open source community as its culture is unique. Here, I'm not trying to uh, stereotype we have different, um, so I'm not trying to stereotype this. Um, we have all different personalities, but we are influenced by the cultural behaviors of our nations as a collective. It's often said that people in Eastern Asian countries are hardworking, shy, feels uncomfortable with conflict, especially in English communications. This is not always the case for those who are born and grew up in the US or Europe or other countries. The environment that naturally forms the culture. One big factor is that compared with the Western, Asians feel more uncomfortable in a very confrontational part of open source development culture. Asian people tend to prefer to maintain or seek harmony rather than risking conflict especially when communicating in their second or third languages. In these situations, it is often said that a person who speaks loud, loudest who takes the credit with the more modest and humble contributors being overlooked. There are other social factors, for example, education and political inferences. Education. There was an observation that the many schools still do not actively teach open source concepts 
if open source participation is not an evaluation criteria for courses or further education, students won't invest time in it. Also, there's no standard approach or curriculum on how to collaborate with open source in the public domain. Political inference must be also considered. The research shows that despite the large number of GitHub users in China, there's a hesitation to contribute to external platforms as they use their own platform, like Gitty, which is China version of GitHub. A community member in China commented, one of the important drivers behind the impression that they are not, that they don't hear many voices from Chinese participants in the international communities could be their different platform usage habits and network barriers. Though Twitter, right, X, um, Stack Overflow and Slack are common across the world, many Chinese developers use their own tools. As per the October's report, developers in China were noticeably creating and consuming open source projects on GitHub, but still, they still seem more hesitation, hesitant to uh, contribute to the repositories. Although the data shows 7.5 million GitHub users are based in China, more than 8 million users also use Git, Gitty. In other words, half of Chinese open source developers prefer to use their local tools instead of GitHub. Due to performance and cost, Gitty users are actually increasing. There are also some pot uh, political reasons behind Govern. So it's very sensitive and complex topic. Finally, this is a more subtle point observed by a few members regarding the community elections. They commented that they've noticed that uh, more chances of someone from the US and Europe getting election in open source election over folks from APAC region. For example, despite the very active contribution numbers in open source, there aren't many steering committee members elected, elected from APAC as they could not get enough votes. So diversity is complex and defined by a combination of multiple factors, including geographical and social factors. Open source is a community itself, and it is strongly influenced by social behavior. We cannot ignore that people who create a community are influenced by their own national behavioral tendencies. Relying on community support from a specific regions only, like the US and Europe, will affect project scalability and sustainability. Open mindset is a key. We must welcome diversity and actively embrace our differences, collaborate, respect, be curious. And change has to happen at both ends. Asian people also need to make additional efforts. They need to be role models for open source culture and to lead others. So don't be scared of making mistakes, be brave and find positive rather than negatives. Appreciate the differences and this applies both those to include and to be included. For real global participation, we need to seek real inclusive cultures so that communities can actually benefit with a real value add. So now I'd like to invite questions and also I'd love to hear how your community approached these challenges today or hear about other factors that could impact participation. Thank you. Any questions? Please. Uh, I have a question about the uh, company IP policy for like the internet proxy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm working on in, in Japan, uh, automotive industry. So sometimes it's really difficult to uh, approach uh, our source code because our company IP policy is very uh, not, not good. So sometimes it's uh, uh, happened to uh, not approach uh, in, in, in my source code. So, uh, so I want to know uh, another region and another industry. What do you think uh, in, uh, the company? 
Barriers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's interesting. So, um, does anyone works in the community that have a um, limitation from the company IP proxy in this room? Because I'm not engineer, so don't you have any thought? Do you know anyone who has this problem? The company's proxy is limited, yeah. and then you're not able to contribute to some of the But this is a work, isn't it? Work related. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've seen that. I think, uh, um, yeah, I've worked with some companies that, that have that, that problem um, where they, they restrict a lot of the, the sites, the collaborative sites that they don't charge for to use. Uh, and it makes it a lot, a lot harder. And, and people do do that. They'll, you know, you'll, you'll talk to somebody and they were tethering from their phone to get it, you know, internet that wasn't company related because they could use the data. So you got to change the environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it is a uh, challenge. Which also is, um, you said something about the language barrier. Mm -hmm. Which I'm sure you did, and I'm actually like, no, I don't have any assistance. Um, the question is, what can we do about that? Do. What can we do about that? Yeah, good question. Yes, it's, uh, well, at the end of the day, we have to some way of communicating that. It only works if, well, if you literally speak the same language, it doesn't necessarily have to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um, I had that same question in the previous or one before, and having all language, you know, because we don't have, not everyone has a common language, you know, English is the official language, but actually it's not their first language for everyone. But having everything translated is, you know, other way around, it's not friendly for the other, so I think I think it's, uh, this is why the community culture comes very, very important. If you create the culture of welcoming and respect each other, we understand the differences and we, you know, be a bit patient. And then, and then also don't be too shy and then let's just make a mistake because my English is not, you know, plural and singular, it's forever, you know, I'm, I keep making mistakes. But, um, you know, but most of the case, People understand, you know, people pick up the terms, especially we're talking in engineering terms. I think we understand. So I think it's both sides. We understand uh, they don't understand our language, and the other side thinks they are trying to communicate more patiently each other so that we can eventually. And so there's no, um, there's no quick uh, solution for this. But I think creating the, this sort of community culture is really a key to overcome, you know, you, you don't agree? <laughs> yeah, I, I know it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Which the other side yeah. completely misunderstood. Mm -hmm. And that rebuts how the whole framework comes down. That's mm -hmm. why we have frameworks. And um, I wonder whether we couldn't find a way to use written communication as the value tool and be a bit more linear or have better ways of well, asking back. Uh, because that's, mm -hmm. that's the problem which really is missing when you, do, when you go for the written communication. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to 
Yeah, I understand. Communication is really hard. Even uh, I'm talking with my husband, and then, you know, we just we still don't understand, you know, misleading and you know, complaining each other's language. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> so yeah, there's no uh, straight answer to resolve this, but uh, I think we have to sort of make, you know, what works, you know, we can try, written works better, or, you know, how about we communicate in this way or, you know, using this tool or something like that so that, you know, it will be little by little. Uh, improve that communication issues. Never, never be 100% good, but um, should continue making improvement. Thank you. Yeah, any other questions? Yes, please. Yeah, and Australia is just so, I mean, we, you know, the growth is round and the, you, you know, we never worked in the same time zone. So I think, yeah, some compromise like in the last conference I got, for example, sometimes you set this meeting time, sometimes friendly to this area and friendly to this area. I know it doesn't work very well. I know that because I have been working in a um, you know, global company for many, many years. But I think there's some sort of, so, you know, respect each other and thinking each other, that triggers the other, you know, people working in the region. They don't think they are the, you know, they are suffered all the time. And then I think that will help to sort of make the communi community, um, you know, think about each other and, you know, find the better solutions. I think that, you know, again, there's no straight answer, but I think bit by bit we need to sort of talk more and then what's the real issues for example i know that i'm from japan and i was working until you know 10 11 o'clock <laughs> used to and then probably you still do <laughs> in japan and this is why that we're still awake and then we can talk with the people in europe and america but it's not a normal and you know we need to meet each other or well, the conference like this and then you know talk so how is it in the real world and what is it a real problem? You know, it's not a problem you know, to have more opportunity to communicate one to one or, you know, one to much um, to understand each other. I think that also helps as well, rather than just uh, uh, writing email or chatting. I think meeting in, in person and talking also helps based on my experience. Sorry, you, oh, okay.
Kind of, yeah. Use time for other things as well, rather than like the best question. Mm -hmm. I would maybe, I think you kind of were touching on it, but for the second question and the other five questions, which could have mm -hmm. a question, but I don't know if you think this is the whole social economical aspect of open source. So I mean, be part of open source is, is, is have this notion of being a kind of free time activity. Well, you did mention that in the beginning, you, you don't have time. Mm. Yeah, thank you. It's very. Thank you. And there are lots of, um, yeah, very good point. And then there are lots of good things. I, uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah. Um, so there are many, so diversity is made of many factors. And it's not just uh, the things I listed up. It's also that, you know, like economic situation and social uh, situation and uh, country situation, all these political situations, that is really uh, complicated. But if we work in the open source and it's a common sort of common uh, subject, and then we at least know that community is so important and respect is important, building community is uh, one of the key things. And then if we understand at least the differences between us, then I think it's really important. It's a good start. Then, you know, there's no such thing which is resolved everything, but I think um, first, uh, you know, as a first step, understand the difference and then start to sort of get closer to each other is uh, definitely the key. And thank you for your useful tip, and then I really find it useful. Yes, please. Um, yeah, I think so. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, but again, you know, I haven't been, I, I don't know many, many communities and then, you know, they all run differently. Most of the project I know, uh, they're doing very well and they're working really hard to sort of make everyone happy, happy contributor, happy users. But uh, you don't need to extremely worry about, you know, how to, but I think you already have a data, how many people from which region and which type of people joining in a community, and then sometimes you have a, occasion, occasionally you have a um, opportunity to look at the data, you know, and then what's missing, because, you know, lo there are lots of projects like Chaos, you know, they provide lots of metrics, and then we know how to make a good, healthy community, and then if you look at the data and numbers and then think that, oh, What's wrong with this? And then that is a good start. So regularly, maybe it's worth uh, assessing the health of the community. I think that is a good start. And then not all the projects have to have an equal number from proportions from all the regions. But if there is some tendency found and if it's, you think it's impacting to the uh, project growth, then you can get started, I think. Yes, please. Upstream culture. Yeah, so mm -hmm. maybe this giving back is, is very low mm -hmm. because um, you have this, uh, the thresholds of like, a lot of legal checks that you make, and it's actually only uh, the work with US companies where I was able to, to uh, mm -hmm. contribute to open mm -hmm. source uh, mm -hmm. networks. So this really is uh, something that's key. It's not just European countries, but maybe we know the industry is. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you don't have to put it in the moonlight. Uh, 
Yeah. We, I mean, ideal world, I think, you know, if the company, especially they rely on the project, then they should get enough resource and budget and, you know, they should encourage uh, people to contribute. But the reality is really hard. And then we had a similar discussion this morning and then there's an OKR and there's a projective and companies goal numbers. And so it's really hard. So it's a, definitely a hard question. And then I want to see the person who can answer to this question in this conference. But uh, yeah, I agree. And yes, definitely companies should encourage, but s depends on the situation, company situation and the leadership idea strategies. It's really hard. But it is, again, this is why I keep talking about how important the companies to contribute and uh, the time and budget for the project. If their business is reliable, they can't be free rider. They have to be a part of it. So I think it's definitely an important thing. Yeah. Any other questions? So thank you so much again for your time and uh, have the rest of the uh, nice conference. Thank you.